The Super Speedway Podcast is a Dream Bigger Media production. For news, photos, show notes, and information about advertising on the podcast, visit www.thesuperspeedway.com. Three, two, one. Welcome to the Super Speedway. He's easily going to drive by some of the cars that are contending. The 42 of Larson, the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Neither of those cars are even going to hold. Oh, oh! Contact with the 11. Sideways goes Denny Hamlin. He keeps it straight, and it stays green. And that's the best thing could have happened with that strategy. If you go out there on new tires and you spin somebody out, you have killed your strategy. Welcome to episode 80 of the Super Speedway podcast, recorded Wednesday, September 26, 2018. I'm your host, Eric Young, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, James Cush. James, I'm operating a little under the weather today, but uh, I'm going to power well, through. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's making its way around, but we, you know what? We've made it 80 episodes to this point, and nothing has really stopped us yet. So I don't think this little cold will uh, will uh, keep us keep us from from entertaining our loyal followers. No, Skype might though. It's already trying on us tonight, so let's no. see how this goes. We're good. We're all, we're all right so oh, far, no. but but Skype always wants to make itself heard. I think we have a delay tonight. It's trying to cut out. So good times, good times. Who knows? I upgraded to the new Mac OS this week, so that's probably why, you know, Microsoft and Apple, you know, so. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how it goes. I'm going to I'm gonna fight through it, too. I'll fight through my end. You fight through yours. Sounds good. Uh, let's talk. Well, well, let's fight through this, too, James, because the last I talked to you, I don't think you had a chance to really watch much, if any, of the race at Richmond this weekend. I honestly watched uh, Radioactive on, on YouTube, and that was my extent of watching this weekend's Federated Auto Parts 400 at Richmond Raceway. I had uh, the hockey season started. I was taking pictures for our um, junior hockey team here in, in Saginaw and popped onto Facebook a couple times, and people were talking about how boring the stages were. And I came home that night and just couldn't bring myself to sit down and watch it. I'd watched the Xfinity race the night before. And uh, Sunday came down with this cold and just never fired the TV up. So saw that uh, old Kyle Busch gets the win. I think MRN called him Roval Proof now with his victory. And uh, I like that. Yeah, I like it too. So yeah, I mean, I I don't know if you got a chance to watch any more of, than what we talked about, but that's pretty much my knowledge of the race. I, you guys heard the the Denny Hamlin clip. That was pretty much the excitement of the race, from what I understand. But uh, anything I'm missing here? <laughs> Um, not much. I, I caught up a little bit after we texted just to kind of go through the, the main points. Sounds like it was pretty, um, ho-hum yeah. for the, for the most part. And then, uh, things got a little bit wild towards the end, but Kyle Busch continues what I, I think is probably his best season of his cup career. Yeah. Right. You would probably agree with that. He's, you know, just rolling on through. He didn't need the win. He's, you know, pretty solid as it is, but, right. um, yeah, just keeps keeps rock and rolling. Big three, get a one, two, three finish. Um, it's kind of a, a perfect uh, exclamation point on the season. Not just a big three, one, two, three finish, but a big 12, one through 12 finish as the top 12 positions yes. all go to playoff drivers. Um, and then all the playoff drivers finished in the top 20 with Ryan Blaney finishing 19th, the furthest back. So the only drivers outside of the that top 12 – Joey Logano finished 14th. Denny Hamlin finished 16th. Kurt Busch finished 18th. And Blaney, as we said, finished 19th. So, um, Hamlin quite... rallied from what, yeah. what he was kind of dealing with there with that, that spin. But right. Um, quite the different yeah, story. Kind from, of rallied, I guess. From Vegas the week before where we had, you know, chase trouble for everybody. Um, playoff guys, you know, maintained pretty well this weekend. Yeah, for sure. Um, just kind of looking at, I was looking at the stats a little bit, and I, I say Denny Hamlin rallied, but you know we're kind of looking at the point standings. It's not uh, not looking good for a few of those guys. No, even I, though they even though they tried to to keep it close. I was looking at NASCAR.com today, and we'll go through the points here in a minute. I don't think we're going to spend a whole lot of time on Richmond because there's not a whole lot to talk about. But uh, Denny can still get in on points. He can still make it on points, but he's got to have a, pretty much a new winner and some help to make it happen. Um, essentially going into the Roval, he's in a must win situation. Him and Eric Jones, both that um, you don't want to be in going to a track that you've never raced at before. That's had a history of issues and testing. So could yeah, be, a, I think could we be a rough cross weekend for Denny. Yeah, I think, 
I think we can cross them both off. Mm-hmm. I, I think so too. I don't think they're yeah, I don't think they're rebounding from this. I kind of looking at the bubble, I don't know how how Austin Dillon does this. <laughs> he has, the last time he was in the chase slash playoff system, he just kept on going through. Didn't he make it to the round of eight? Yeah. The first like time that, through. And so. now he's you know, he's got himself a nice little ten point cushion. It's it's not not the biggest cushion in the world, but he's on the right side of the good. And you got Johnson and Boyer down there to find find a way back in, which is, I think, crazy that Clint Boyer, as good as he was at one point during the season, he might be one of the first guys out. I know. But, I mean, anything can happen. Just in those, those, you know, four spots there right by the bubble. I mean, even even as far up, let's, let's run through it real quick. Chase Elliott is in ninth place in the points right now. He and Austin Dillon are both tied, ninth and tenth. They're plus ten to the good. Uh, Alex Bowman is 11th, plus five. Uh, Ryan Blaney's plus four in 12th, and then Clint Boyer's minus four. Jimmy Johnson's minus six. All those guys, there's definitely plenty of room for them to to swap going, you know, coming out of Charlotte. But uh, Eric Jones minus 21, Denny Hamlin minus 29. You're talking, you know, some some stage wins. It's win, yeah. You know, you got to you got to get some stage points. You got to get a win or really good finish, and have other people have trouble to make those finishes or those those points work going into into the last race or coming out of the last race of the first round well, and, so right and if, if you're eric jones you win two stages and that's 20 points right there right it's it's not as big of a mountain to climb if you think about it i just don't see it happening it's a you know all those guys especially if it's like richmond where they're all hovering around each other and it's not going to be that easy to to gap those points so well, i think jones and hamlin they got they got to win it and that's the, that's the thing too. Like, they can't just they can't just rely on other chase drivers or playoff drivers having a bad day. They need to have a good day on top right. of other playoff drivers' bad days. So even even right. if they have a good day, you know, unless it's a spectacular day, it still isn't enough to get them in on the, on its own. So they need they need two things to happen. And how often does that actually happen? It doesn't work out very often that way usually. Yeah. And if you're Joe Gibbs, you've got you know, you, you would think you have three of the best horses, you know, in this thing and you're about to lose two of them. You've yeah. got, you've got probably one of the best, you've got one top three in Kyle Busch and he's not going anywhere, but you're going to lose, you're going to lose two bullets out of the gun here with Jones and Hamlin. Yeah. Um, which would kind of be a bummer because if they can't get out of this round, they're, they're both really good at Talladega. Hamlin's really good at Martinsville. If they could have just, you know, been, you know, a little bit better than average. You'd think they could have at least made a little bit of a run into the to the round of eight. So here's the thing, um, though. Denny Hamlin. Not looking, not looking that way. It doesn't he's matter. He's just off all year. It, it doesn't matter because he's yeah. really good at Richmond, and he sucked at Richmond. So it's yeah, just. He's just in trouble. Yeah. He's been in trouble. It's He's he's in that situation where if he gets in, it's just a wasted spot in the playoffs anyway, I think, at this point. So, uh, unfortunately. Eric Jones, on the other hand, Eric Jones has had a good year or a decent year. I mean, he's got the win. So to see Eric Jones slip out, I think that's a bigger loss than Denny this year in particular with how they've been running. So, yeah. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I think we, I think you and I talked about it last week with Hamlin, you know, he's run out of time. Yep. He's not, you know, you feel like he's not that old, but he really is. He's one of the old guard now. Mm-hmm. And if, it's just, you know, we, we thought about going into Richmond and he, if he could put on a good show, it's just not been his year. It's just, he had, he hasn't been there. And Jones is more of a surprise. Um, he had some bad luck at Vegas that really sent him back and now he's really in trouble. Uh, but that's the way this format goes. We've seen guys who are really good get knocked out early before, you know, um, Larson last year is a great example. Had a really bad round of eight and that was it. He was done. Yeah. So if if Joe Gibbs uh, is booting out the young kids, you know, you got to worry about the old guys, right? (laughs) I guess. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to get to that in a little bit too. Yeah. Um, you know, another, Another a guy, another you know, we should probably mention Alex Bowman, um, doing enough right now, yeah, to stay alive. I thought he'd be you know easily one of the first guys out, but kids putting up a fight. Him and Dylan are kind of the two surprises that are, um, kind of snuck up there. They're uh, they're tucked right in safely for now, but it's it's going to be a heck of a battle. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch this week. Let's talk about a couple of those guys. So you got. Eric Almirola comes home with a fifth place finish at Richmond. Austin Dillon, who you mentioned, manages rally, gets a sixth place finish. You know those guys. I mean, Bowman comes home twelfth, so he's 
he's doing what he needs to stay in it, but he's not, I mean, he didn't have the great yeah. finish that those guys had. I mean, 12th place is great for, for anybody, but not to that level. Um, I, you know, a couple of those guys, Chase Elliott comes home fourth. I mean, these guys are making it known that they're, they're in this thing and it's, it's maybe closer than what we think. Although, you know, the two guys that I think we're going to worry about making, getting the, you know, getting it all together are the, are the top two in the race. So <laughs> with Kyle and yeah. Kevin, yeah, and how, you know, when we mentioned just a little bit ago, how important those stages are going to be. Uh, Clint Boer is a great example from Richmond. If you just kind of look back really quickly, all the guys around him were north of 30 points, 40 points, and he gets a 10th place finish with 27 points. So a couple of bad stages and yeah, he gets, he gets the top 10, but at what cost he's, you know, on the outside looking in, he's that first guy out, but you know, that's, that's, that's going to come into play is every little point matters when you're that far back in the pack. Right. So, so Jimmy Johnson is minus six. He's in 14th. Does, does Jimmy rally? Does he, does he get it done? Yeah. If, I was going to say, you know, I was going to ask you too, if you had to, you know, so you, if you're picking four guys to fall out, who are the four guys at this point? Uh, I say Johnson and Boyer get back in. I think Boyer has been too good. Um, and he's shown a history of being pretty a pretty good road course racer, even though we don't know what the Roval is really going to be. Um, and Johnson, I just think, will consistent his way in. I think he'll he'll do what he needs to do to get in. He's too good. He's too close, and he's too good. I know it's not been the best year, but I think those two guys get in. Um, and if I had to pick two guys to come back out, I think it's Bowman. And, uh, I mean, I hate to pick against Ryan Blaney. But he just hasn't been there either. Uh, um, I'd say Bowman and Blaney, just based on the numbers, they come back. That would be my guess. That would be my guess. Okay. Um, I'm with you on Blaney. I think Blaney falls out. I just don't think they've got stuff clicking right He's now. He's not been good. No. Um, and yeah, I it's think, weird. I think yeah. Boyer gets in. It's hard to bet against Jimmy Johnson, especially at Charlotte, even though it's really not is. Charlotte. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. I say Jimmy stays out. I, I, I say Boyer in over Blaney and the rest stays the way it is. Unless. Yeah. I think John, you know, with, with Johnson, I just think the intelligence and the skill will be enough for him right now. Right. It won't, it, you know, it's not going to work in the next round, but for right now, at, the, at this point, I think it's enough to get him into the round of 12. I don't know. But he'll need to he'll need to do more moving forward. He'll need to do more moving. Like Talladega's coming up and you know, that's that's going to be a big question mark for him too. But let me, he's let me got throw, to Let me throw another one at there. you here. I, I I'm talking over you cuz of Skype, but um Are oh, you fine? So we we out of the eight guys there and and we're going to talk about Charlotte and we're going to talk about Charlotte a little bit more than we'd normally preview a race because of the Roval this weekend, but at this point with these with these eight guys here who do you think out of those eight has the best chance of getting a win at Charlotte to lock themselves in? Mm. I know my pick, but it's gotta be Boyer. That's the way I'm leaning to. It's gotta be only because he's had on track performance. The right. rest of these guys really haven't. And that's weird because Chase Elliott is a road course winner this year too. That is true. That is something to look at. Um, I think Chase would probably be my second pick, but I would probably go Boyer. Yeah, I, I think that's probably the best choice out of these guys. Obviously, Jimmy Johnson can come out of nowhere and do something, but he just hasn't had the season to do it. The other one that for some reason just feels like one of those guys, I don't know, Eric Jones is terrible on road courses, though, isn't he, or is he good? I can't remember how he's been doing on road courses. I mean, he's good enough to make the playoffs, so he can't be, you right. know, I don't know. I just, well, let's take a look. You know what? Let's take a look. For at it some really reason, quick. I feel I'll like you know. Eric Jones hanging back there is like, I don't know. It just feels I, I'm like crossing that. him off. I, well, I, I, I am I, too, but of anybody in that group that could just sneak one out and get it done. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Hamlin too. You never know, but Hamlin just hasn't had the season. Eric Jones has actually had the season. I just feel like out of those guys, maybe Eric could slip it to get slip it. You know what he needs to get done and get it together and, and do it. But yeah. I, I'd, I, I'd bet on Boyer any day out of out of those eight for sure so so in 20 in 2017 eric jones finished 25th at sonoma and he finished 10th at watkins Glen. Okay. and then this year and you got to think this is more of a 
He was when, seventh at Sonoma and fifth at Watkins Glen. Wouldn't you say so, this is a Watkins Glen style track more so than Sonoma because of it's going to be fast, right? Well, I guess the middle is going to be fast. It's going to be fast in certain spots, Man, but you just it also can't compare this to anything. <laughs> no, it's so different. No, it's so different. Eric Jones is very he's he's had one finish in his entire career outside of the top ten in road courses so i don't know if that changes your opinion or not but yeah i'm still leaning i'd, I'd go boyer jones chase those are my top three in order of best chance of getting a win this weekend yeah but none of yeah. them are gonna do it i don't think so i no. well we'll pick our winners a little bit later but yep <clears throat> all right anything else on richmond we needed to go over before we move on um dale jr had a heck of a run hey in yeah let's, let's talk about that dale jr starts on the outside pole and where do you? I don't. I don't have the results in front of me. Where do you wind Finished up? Fourth. Yeah, Finished I mean, fourth. He led uh, ninety some laps or something. Right in it, man. That that was awesome to see. I was so worried that he'd go out there and, you know, look silly. But you know, I mean, obviously, Junior Motorsports has some of the best cars in the Xfinity series right now. So, he's, yeah, he's driving good equipment. But that was great to see. It was really good. Yeah, to he's see. been he's been off for almost a year, eleven months or so, yeah. or ten months, and goes out there and dang, dude, nice run. Yeah. We should race Xfinity a little more often. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was cool. Just cool to see. Um, you know, fans were excited. I saw Jeff Gluck tweeted out that there was one guy who came from, um, I want to say like California or Washington or some way out west and just wanted to see Dale Jr. race. And then he left. Didn't even stay for the cup race. Yeah. Watched Xfinity and left. I could see it. Pretty cool. Pretty cool, yeah. man. I, You know, and I was going to say like if Smoke ever came back like around these parts in Xfinity, I'd go watch him. Yeah. Yeah, I no. mean, I, if I tell you what, if if I was on the fence of going to a race, and I mean, even Dale Jr., if I if I was on the, on the fence of going to a race and Dale Jr. is running it, I mean, to be honest, when we went to, uh, you know, went to Michigan, uh, you know, that was that was part of the the thought of going there is seeing Jr. run. So, um, yeah. and I did the same thing when when it looked like Gordon was going to run, you know, trying to get there to see those guys. So yeah, it's it's I I'd say it's, it's a something. reason to go. Yeah, I mean something that these guys come back, which, um, yeah, I'd like to see Junior maybe do a couple more races here every so often, but it looks like this might be his only one, um, and it could be his last one Yeah. Um, for a while. So, yeah, it was cool. I saw it was a cool story, you know. The X-Mini race wasn't anything uh, spectacular either, but, um, There was some know. good battling, but that was about it. I mean, and yeah. it was mostly, I mean, yeah. there was there was one point where I think the top four or five guys were battling back and forth, and. Like I said, I watch more of the I watch most of the Xfinity race, but um, yeah, there was a lot of battling in between in the stages of those guys, and it was, uh, you know, a little bit of somebody had a short run car, somebody had a long run car, and they had long green flag runs, and so it it allowed yeah. you know drivers to get ahead and then drivers come back and pass. So it was it was a good race. It just wasn't a barn burner, same as the Cup race. So the whole uh, the whole weekend for me in sports felt like the early two thousands because you had Junior in the hunt, and then Tiger Woods is out there winning. <laughs> right at the golf tournament and i'm like what is going on out there we right. got and the yeah, lions won like for football and i mean yeah <laughs> weird well the lions that doesn't feel like any era <laughs> right that's just, rant. that's just like winning the lottery right yeah <laughs> all right uh anything else on richmond oh i the notes here. Richmond in the dust. Yeah. Onto the uh onto the Roval. Yes, yes. But before we go to the Roval, let's talk about some news. Um most of these probably be pretty quick items, but just wanted to hit on them a little bit here. Uh first of all, International Speedway Corporation announced this week they're doing the whole same deal as uh SMI has for their tracks with their travel protection. Um they are going to if you if a race that you go to gets rained out. Uh, you can exchange it for a ticket of, I believe it's equal value or whatever, to one of their other ISC tracks. So um, the only thing, I guess the only thing I could see that could be better than this is if somehow SMI and, and ISC could work together and just make it so it works across the whole schedule. But this is much better than nothing. And as somebody who, who you know, wasted money on tickets by, you know, buying them to the, the race at Michigan that didn't run till Tuesday and not getting to use them, I think this is a great deal yep. and, and I'm, I'm excited for it. I think this is something that's been, you know, a long time coming and it's a great way to get people in the seats at other tracks. If, if, you know, if you want to do that. So. Yeah. I love this whole thing. Um, just for the same reasons you said, and I, I like what NASCAR has been doing with their ticket packages too. Like if you buy the NASCAR heat video game 
Yeah. Um, they've been doing this for a couple of years too. You get a fifty dollar voucher for tickets, which, yeah, man, get butts in the seats any way you can. Um, you know, if, you know, if Michigan were to rain out and I could, and I could go to, oh, I don't know, Daytona, that right. would be pretty sweet. You know, well, I, I mean, love that. that I, love, I love that option. I mean, that's that's cool, right? You, you talk Michigan, you've got sh- uh, Chicago that's close by as far as another ISC track. So if if yep. you know you get to go to Chicago. Um, trying to think where else you got Kansas, which isn't terribly far away. Um, you've got some tracks over on the East too. So you got Richmond, you've got, um, Dover and all those. So, I mean, there's, there's options. So yeah, no, you go from Dover, Dover is ISC, isn't it? I think, yeah. Well, it was Dover on its own. No, I think Dover, I think Dover, ISC bought them. Uh, I think it's Dover and Pocono oh, are in the you same. Might, you might be right. You might be right. Yeah. And then, uh, Indianapolis is on its own as well. So you can't go to any of those tracks. But... Right. I think that's how it goes. Well, I mean, Indy, you pretty much, I think you just show up, they'll let you in. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> For oh. sure. <laughs> so, all right. Um, Jimmy Johnson uh, announces this week they'll do a throwback to his rookie paint scheme at Homestead at the end of the season. Um, I just, I, this feels so funny with these throwback schemes they're doing because it's a farewell to Lowe's, but doesn't it? Feel to you like a farewell Jimmy Johnson season? Like I don't, I don't. I saw this. The, I saw this in the notes. I don't agree that it feels like a farewell season for Jimmy. It's definitely a farewell season for Lowe's. Definitely, yeah. Um, which, speaking of which, Lowe's has said they will not return. There, the, yeah. There were some rumors that they were maybe coming back as an associate or something, yeah. and they they were like, uh, no, yeah, we are coming back at all. <laughs> so, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I don't think Jimmy's going anywhere. It's just awkward. That, I know, I it's mean, just it's oh, different. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. I yeah, I I see what you're saying though. You know, it, we I think we've gotten used to the big extravagant farewell seasons with, you know, from Gordon to Stewart to to Junior. You know, the last three years we've had somebody, um, some you know really high profile drivers retiring. So right. we've gotten used to it. But um, yeah, Jimmy's running these these two throwbacks at the end of the year. He's got his uh his pride or what is it? Power of pride. Parts- Power of Pride scheme is his very first scheme, and then his rookie scheme, which they look awesome on the Camaro. By the way, yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, still a bummer that Lowe's is going to be gone. Yeah, it's too bad. It's too bad they've been in the sport yeah. for a long time, and yeah, who knows? Maybe they'll leave and realize that it's not worth it and come back. But yeah, it's you know we've you know, we've talked on this podcast probably enough about sponsorship this year, but still to me so strange that the seven-time champion is not gotten even one sponsor announcement yet. Right. And Austin Dillon's releasing his paint scheme for next year already with Dow. <laughs> right. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. Well, Dow's doing pretty well, so. <laughs> yeah, I think Dow's fine. Yeah. yeah Dow, Dow. <laughs> um, NASCAR made some updates this week to its leadership structure. Brent DeWar, former, well, current slash former NASCAR president, uh, stepping down. He's going to be replaced by Steve Phelps. DeWar is moving to a senior consulting and advisory role next year. Um, I almost put this as a as a do you care, but I think we do care because we want things to change. And, and I think this is a another sign that, you know, maybe the Brian France era is winding down and and we'll get some changes in NASCAR and, and a fresh set of eyes on things. And not like Steve Phelps came out of nowhere, but um, I think it's a good sign for those who who feel that we're struggling and we need some changes. I, I don't know what your thought is on it, James. No, I see it as a comfort hire. I I have no qualms against Steve Phelps. I think he's, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of thoughts on him other than I, you know, he's been doing a great job for a long time. Right. Um, but if when you hire from in from the inside, right. You get you get that change, but you also get that familiarity and Steve's been with the company for many years um and done some great things on the marketing side. So, um yeah, good hire. Um I, I mean, I don't know what else to say. I, I you know, but you're right. Uh, Brian France era looks like the restructuring is in place, um, yep. to kind of get him out. So, and Dewar, we'll see. Dewar was asked uh, in an article with NBC Sports about there were a bunch of questions asked of him, but one of the questions was whether Brian France would come back or not. And basically, he said Brian's dealing with his own issues. That's not a question for him to answer. And yeah, move they on. won't commit. Yeah, they're going to be non-committal on that exactly. for a while. Exactly. I think they, I think they may think that he's coming back at some point. Yeah, it's possible. The way that, because I, they don't want to say, yeah, he's coming back yet, because it's not the right thing to say, because people would be outraged. Right. But yet they won't, they won't just, you know, boot him away either. So. Right. We'll see. 
We'll yeah. see. And then uh, somewhat, I think, breaking news uh, before we started recording. Maybe it was earlier today, but uh, actually it looks like it was earlier today, about 5 o'clock. Um, Adam Stern tweets that a majority of NASCAR Cup teams voted in recent days to endorse uh, the 2019 rules related to the so-called All-Star Package um, that NASCAR has propo- proposed. This is according to people familiar with the situation. Um, exact number of races it'll be used for is not clear, but it's said to be at most events 1.5 to 2 miles in length, or uh, tracks 1.5 to 2 miles in length. Um, and we've talked ad nauseum about the, the rules package. I don't know that we need to go back into whether this is good or whether this is bad, but I mean, I don't see any surprise there to you, James. No, I'm, I'm not surprised, but dang, <laughs> I was hope I was hoping we'd be able to avoid this thing, but we're going to see it. And I, I felt like we were going to, we, I think we've all known 2019, we're going to see this thing at some point. Right. So, yeah, let's see what happens. I it's, was listening coming. to the late shift on Sirius XM last night where they were talking about it a little bit. And uh, um, Brad Doherty was talking about it. And he's very much for it. And I understand why he's for it because he's not a front running team necessarily. And this will probably make things more equal to him. But, I mean, some of the aspects that he talked about with it last night were good um, and made me want to give it a little bit more of a chance again. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. I'm right in the middle on it, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. I saw a tweet earlier today. I'm going to see if I can find it. I meant to like it so I could find it quickly. Well, I I still like my idea. I'll I'll filibuster while you search real quick. Um, I still like my idea the best only because it's my idea and I'm, I'm right and everybody (laughs) else is wrong. Why can't we just split it? Why can't we split the 2019 package on all races with multiple events? I think the problem is, is that you then run the risk of one event sucking and one event being good. You know what I mean? One well, way or the other, depending, I don't, I'm not saying one would go one direction or the well, other, but I don't know. I, I don't think NASCAR wants to, I don't think NASCAR wants to put the comparison out there to be quite honest, because I don't want, I don't think they want people, not that they're not going to be able to anyway, but I don't think they want people to be able to, um, to be able to compare, you know, that closely um, because they don't want to look bad, I think. Well, and we did, I mean, you know, just a counterpoint, we did run a season in 2007 where NASCAR ran two different models of race car. Right. I don't, you know, I I guess I don't. Well, we also ran where they did the test at Michigan and with the high drag package and they did Yeah, we Indy. Fans paid, yeah, fans paid. That really ticks me off too. That, That race really made me mad because fans paid money to watch a uh, competitive event, which was a glorified test session. Yeah. But I mean, and, and, and what did people do when we did that? They got mad because well, the they race compared was the two races. And so maybe that's what NASCAR is trying to avoid. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm trying to find, I still can't find this tweet. I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to find it. I can't remember who tweeted. It, it was a driver. I thought, um, but basically they said that when you, if you have a bunch of oh no you know who it was it was Chad uh, Finley who runs in the uh, he's a local driver here from Michigan he runs in the truck series occasionally in the and the uh, um, and and runs in ARCA let me find it here now, yep. now that I know who it is so he says I wish people would ask the question if everyone has essentially the same bodies on top of having a spec engine then how will we expect the racing to be better. If everyone has the same stuff, how will we have any passing? Only answer is restrictor plate. It's not a bad argument. Yeah, it's, that's a good point. You know, didn't when you said spec engines that way that also brought up. Didn't Kyle Busch have a great rant about spec engines this week? I didn't. See I don't it. have. I don't have anything in front of me. I think he was really furious about spec engines. Hmm. Everybody go look. Everybody go look that up because I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the time and, and time to research it right now. But um, yeah, I, you know, back, but back to the package. I mean, I, I've said it on this podcast many times. I'm not a, not a huge fan of it, but you know, I think I'm with you that if we're gonna do this thing, let's just do it. Let's make 2019 the year we're gonna do it, and you know, f- I'm rooting for it to fail so we can. <laughs> We can do something <laughs> different, but maybe it will work. And you know, I'll, and if it's if it's great and everybody loves it, and I have to eat crow, that's fine too. Here's a follow-up um, tweet from from Chad Finley. 
He says uh, he says he races in the truck series. He says it's still ex- uh, it's still extremely hard to pass. Look at how many races were won this year simply because of track position. That's what needs to be fixed. If you give everyone the same stuff, track position becomes even more important. And so there again, you put the restrictor plates on the cars, makes it easier for them to pass, makes it easier for to get those runs, gives an advantage to the guy behind, and you can, in theory, fix that. So I don't know. We'll right. see what happens. I, I'm yep. not. I'm not cheering for it to fail. I'm cheering for it to be an awesome success because I don't want to see a failure. Um, yeah. But I'm. I'm. I'm on the fence, man. I don't know. Just yeah. Know. I'm. Yeah. And we've both been on the fence this year. Um. And I've. I think I completely jumped at some point. I don't know when I completely jumped. Oh, but you there was... jump. You hate everything. I was an early jumper, though. You hate was... everything. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you. About it. <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you about that. <laughs> You're so cynical, man. I, I want, you know, I'm not an optimistic person, but when it comes to this type of stuff, I like to, I like to think opt- optimistically. And you're like, nah, it's gonna suck. <laughs> That's the one thing, you know, we agree a lot. This may be the one thing where we never see eye to eye, which is fine. We don't have to. Well, I, think I you, like it. I think you and I have a different idea on what good racing is too. I really do. Yeah, I think so. You know, I I want it. I wouldn't. I'm. I'm okay with a manufactured race to a certain extent. We talked about those last week. Yeah. Um, I'm, I just want to see good competition. Now I don't want to see a fake race. Don't get me wrong. I was a fan of the WWE, but not because of, because I thought it was real or got into, you know, I got into the behind the scenes stuff, but yeah. I don't, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see fixed racing, but I would rather see a race that I don't know who's going to win to the last lap. And that's just how it is. And so I'm good with changes that are going to make that happen. I, I understand the purists. I understand the, those people, but it's, that's not me. Yeah. And I get it. You know, I, I do. I really do. I, I just, something about it, something about this rules package. I don't know. It's just, there's something there that just rubs me the wrong way. And yeah. I still, I still feel it. I still feel it. So my issue is, it is. It's, it's a Band-Aid fix, and I don't like Band-Aid fixes. That's that's my yep. problem I have against it. But who knows? Well, maybe it'll work out. Maybe it'll be awesome, and, and we'll be good. So we'll see. Yep. I'm cheering for, sure. for it. Yep. I hope it works. Yep. Yeah, we'll see. Yep. We'll see. So we'll probably yep. see it uh, second race next season, I would assume. We'll see it when we get to Atlanta, more than likely. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking we will. I, th- I think we'll know more in the offseason this year, too. Yeah, um, definitely. Or maybe by Homestead. You know, NASCAR will have some sort of an announcement because these teams are going to start prepping these cars um for next year they i mean they start pretty quick yeah so i would assume they're they're gonna have to know i would assume they're already cutting holes in bodies for next year to put those ducks in so yep they probably already have some sort of an idea and they're already getting them prepped and ready so yeah if they voted on already they probably have a pretty good idea what's happening so yep and the drivers are gonna be ticked (laughs) we'll see how that goes that should be some interesting offseason fodder too yeah i'm all right if the driver driver. i I don't care if the drivers are mad i don't i honestly don't care um, well, your favorite driver's mad every all the time. Well, that's so. true. That is true. <laughs> it's right in. Yeah. So no, I'm. I, well, who's you're to talk, Mr. Tony Stewart fan? Well, that's true. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so, but no, I I want the drivers to be uncomfortable. I want them to be upset about it. And I want to see them get fired up. And you know, I'm I'm of the mindset that I want to see the best drivers in the sport. And if the racing's the best, that's where they're going to be. And if they go somewhere else, then okay. Yep, so be it. There's a lot of guys to fill those seats right now, so. Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right, let's talk Silly Season, James, because the Silly Season list is longer than the news list. Yeah, <laughs> it's getting good. Silly Season is red hot. So we've, we've, got, favorite. we've got some some uh, some finalization on some things, and then we've got some new stuff that uh, that is up in the air again. So um, let's start out with Daniel Suarez. Uh, he was uh, he talked to ESPN, talked to Bob Pachris. Um, and said that, first of all, he, I guess he changed his Twitter profile to remove the mention of JGR in it, and Pockers asked him about it, and he, sa- he says, I don't ha- really have anything good to say. When you don't have anything good to say, it's better not to say anything. Fired. So, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it's looking like they're not going to be sticking him in a car to, to help him out next year, blah, blah, blah. But supposedly he's got some irons in the fire, and uh, I guess we'll jump around here in this list. Uh, Stuart Haas Racing and RCR were both, actively trying to sign him essentially this weekend at Richmond. And uh, it sounds like RCR's backup plan. If they can't get Suarez is to promote Daniel Hemrick to the 31 car. Woof. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I think that's, I think it's too early for Daniel. I don't, 
I yeah. mean, well, it's, here's it's the thing easy like, to say though because I mean, every time, every time I say that, every time I say this guy is not impressed in the Xfinity yeah. series, he shouldn't be in the Cup series. I immediately see Jimmy Johnson climb out on the roof of the car at Watkins Glen when he crashes into the barrier. They don't even know who he is when he hits the wall. Yeah, and yep. he came in, and you know, he's you know the greatest of all time in NASCAR. So, and and Daniel, you know, Daniel's regressed this year a little bit. Yeah. Um, but you know. I mean, second year regression, but is a lot different than any. You know, if if well, he had been in the in the series for a couple of years and you're, and you're seeing gradual regression every year, that's one thing. Um, year one to year two, uh, it's not that big of a deal for me. He's still a great talent. Um, I just, I, it's crazy that Joe Gibbs is doing this again. Yeah. I can't believe they're doing this again. But you know, if you got a chance to bring in the cha- uh, you know, a championship team like Truex and Pern. Yeah, I guess you got to do it. And Denny Hamlin's fully funded. And yeah. I don't know. I, I guess, you know, I, I was reading, too, that Stuart Haas, one of the whole hang ups is they don't know what's going on with Eris, if they will come with them. But that might not be a big deal. Right. Yeah, that's nice. That. There's a lot of funding hanging up right now with Suarez. Yeah. So that's where I think that's where everything's at is they don't know what, where the money's going to come from for Suarez just yet. But I'm, I'm assuming that with a few meetings that will be handled. Right. It's not a big deal for Stuart Haas. Haas has been funding that car pretty much by himself since he brought in Kurt Busch. So I don't think they care. If they really want Suarez, they'll get him. Yeah. He won't go to RCR. If he goes to RCR, it's because he's got money coming with him. Right. Um, Hemrick coming up to RCR. I, like I said, I don't think Hemrick's the guy to move to Cup. But at the same time, he's moving to RCR. I mean, he's not moving to he's not moving yeah. to a championship caliber team to begin he, with. He'll bring South Point with him probably, right? right? Yeah, yeah, I would assume so. And South Point's been with RCR for many years through the Brendan Gone stuff. Yeah. And I I think they would just probably increase their role. With I don't see that as a problem. But I think Daniel Hemrick to the 31 car is along the lines of um, what you know Gene Haas talked about with the 41 car last week, that it's, it's more beneficial to them financially to run that car, especially yeah. having it have been in the playoffs it's better for them to run it than not to run it better than better to run it with a, you know, maybe not a top notch driver than it is to run it or to park it and put it away and not. Run yeah. It, so this is a, this is a strange one. I just, yeah. You know, I really thought they were invested in Suarez when they brought, you know, when Edwards retired and he was kind of thrown into that ride probably earlier than they wanted him to be. See, that's, I think what the biggest thing is, is it's, it's the Joey Logano situation. He was yeah, put it really is. A, it's the same thing. Yeah, he was put into this role that they weren't. It, it, they put him there because they needed to put somebody there, not because he was the guy for it. And so, and it was cheaper probably to bring him in at the time than anybody else. You just bring up Suarez at a smaller salary. Yeah, um, and, and you just go from there with the with the funding you got. But yeah, he's that's you know that's a bummer for him. But it, if it lands- all came down to that agreement with Furniture Row, see if they didn't have that yeah. agreement with Furniture Row with Eric Jones to begin with then yep. Suarez never would have been in that car. Right, yeah. But because yep. they made the plans for, for Eric Jones and then Edward split, they needed to put somebody in that car, so Suarez got the seat. If so. Suarez ends up at Stuart Haas Racing, it's pretty much a lateral move for him. Yeah. He's going from top-tier equipment to more top-tier equipment. It's right. just what's he going to do with that. It's really It really is the Joey Logano thing all mm-hmm. over again. It is completely the same, except you know he's not going straight to Penske. He's just going to another Ford team. Right. It's crazy. And, of course, all this is made possible by the fact that we talked last week. Ryan Newman was leaving RCR. Find out this week, which, again, no surprise, he's going to be driving the six car next year for Roush Fenway Racing. So, so crazy. That's another crazy move. <laughs> so yeah. he has to – but I saw that Cat's not bringing their sponsorship with him. He must be able to attract some sponsor for that car yeah, or something. Yeah, that's just strange There's to gotta me. has got to be a reason. Yeah. So I is mean, Matt, Kenseth, Matt Kenseth done, right? Well, so Matt Kenseth. He says that he wants to stay at Roush, but he does not want to race full-time. So he is not going to go race for another team. He's not going to shop teams. It sounds like, basically, that Kenseth is going to be willing to stay at Roush, help him out a little bit, or just be done. It is, kind of sounds like where, where Kenseth is right now. I don't oh, think he Kenseth. wants – he doesn't want the whole grind of everything, I think, and the, you know, the, the, um, the obligation of it. I think he's enjoying his role yeah. right now as kind of a mentor and – you know, that sort of thing, which I understand. I mean, Mark Martin did that for a while, so. Yeah, I think, you know, they brought him in, obviously, as a sponsorship maneuver to because Bain was not fully funded. Right. 
So you bring in Kenseth, you fill up the, the you fill up the car for the rest of the year. Bain's not doing anything, so you know it doesn't really matter. You're not worried about his development anymore at this point, right? So you just get the car fully funded. Hopefully, you get a little bit better performance. Maybe Kenseth can give you some insight, and you know it's probably worked out for him the way they wanted it to this year, right? Um, so now you bring in Ryan Newman. I don't know what that does. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan Newman. Yeah. But you know, it, it, you're, I don't know. It's it's. Ryan Newman's making a lateral move here too. He's going from Richard Childers to to Roush, which is maybe even a slight step back. I think it's a step back. Yeah. Other than the fact that Roush has got Fords over the Chevys right. right now, but that's about the only advantage I'd give him. Yeah. Yep. That's true. So, yeah. Crazy. Well, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I've I think I've said my piece, and I, I won't get <laughs> too too much into what I said via text message, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, good good for Ryan Newman if he wants to stick around. That's great. And the the last shoe on that whole deal is there was talk about Ty Dillon. Yeah, he's um, not. Oh, he's yeah. not leaving. He's staying with that thirteen yeah. car. He says he's got a commitment there, and that's where he's where he's yeah. staying. So he will. We said that racing. last week. Yep. Yeah, we've said that, and he has kudos to him. He has stuck with by his guns the entire time. Yeah. Um, you know, he probably could have kicked Ryan Newman out of that car anytime he wanted. Oh yeah, and. He's sticking with Jermaine. I don't know why he's not trying to step up at this point, but maybe he really is just happy yeah. there being a race car driver. I mean, he's he seems like a happy guy. He's always happy at the track. He's got um, a job, I guess. You yeah. know, if you want it to, if it's a if it's a job for you and you're, you know, getting that paycheck every week. Yep. Good on, good on him. Yep. And then uh, one more that I don't have in the notes here, but I think it dropped today. Um, Toyota loses another. Uh, Noah Gregson going to drive for Junior Motorsports in the one car next year. In the yeah, the, uh, yeah, the KBM truck team continues to feed JR Motorsports top-level yep. <laughs> talent. There you go. So Noah yeah. Gregson moving up to the Xfinity Series next year. That'll be uh, a good ride for him. And uh, yep. I expect some good things out of him in the Xfinity Series. Yeah, if he's anything, uh, if he look, takes the William Byron roadmap, I mean, yeah, go out there and try to win yourself a championship. And yep. Hopefully another, you know, hopefully another ride opens up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe by the time, you know, if he does a couple of years in Xfinity, maybe that's the time Johnson retires. And maybe he's that the guy. Same thing. Yeah, he could be. Yep. He could be the next he driver of the 48. Could be. Yeah. You could be looking at it right now. There you go. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Almondinger. Oh, yes, I did miss. I skipped over Almondinger. So Almondinger AJ. is that's right. I said there there was there was a new opening, um, which I don't think this is a surprise. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago that there was Probably rumor. On, yeah, a long time ago. Yep. Yeah, but uh, AJ Allmendinger will not return to JT Doherty Racing next season. There is no word right now on where AJ will go if anywhere, and who's going to fill that seat for JTD JTG Doherty. So, yeah. Yeah, we uh, we talked on the podcast when when he blew up at Sonoma, mm-hmm. and it was all his fault. We said at that point, <laughs> we had that discussion. Like, yep. what are you keeping? AJ Allmendinger around for if he can't even, you know, perform. Do you think, do you think he ends the, up anywhere? Or do you think he's done? He's Levine, Levine, however you say that, Levine maybe. Maybe or maybe Xfinity. Did they start a second car. Do you think go down to Xfinity series? Yep. There's gonna be a, cu- a couple Xfinity rides open. Could be could, could maybe hook up with Roger Penske and run some more Xfinity races. I know they still have a pretty good relationship. Didn't he win in an RCR car in Xfinity? He won. He won. Um, I think he won a couple of times for Roger. Did he? Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was Roger. It was Cause, Roger. Because that was after he had already been fired from Penske. Yep. And then he was on his his comeback trail. Yep. And All Roger right. put him back in the Xfinity series, and he won a couple of times. So there you go. Yep. Got I'd, him back. I like CAJ still around. I like AJ. He's a good guy. Yeah, I do too. I, it'd be a bummer to lose him um, on the personality side, and he's really good on TV. I think too. He, yeah. He's, you know, usually on is it? He's usually on Race Hub, right? Yep. It's, one of those shows or NASCAR America. I think he's on hub. Yeah. I think he's on hub. And uh, yeah, he's been, he's been good for the sport. You know, he came in, um, he was kind of one of the highly touted open wheel drivers of, of his era. I mean, he was really good in the cart series when he came over to NASCAR and, um, he had made the, he had made the climb before he had his uh, drug problem. Yeah. And, he, he was on the rise right. for sure. Yep. He made the leap from Red Bull to, to Richard Petty and then all the way to Roger Penske. And he was, you know, he was there. Yep. And, uh, you know, had to take a step back and made a career for himself, though. You know, what well, he's it's one of those things where not everybody's going to be a superstar, but it, the next best thing from being a superstar is to be a veteran of the sport. Mm-hmm. And AJ became uh, a veteran. Yep. Like, he was a good veteran and lasted a long time, won a, won a cup race, 
And a lot of guys can say that they've done that. You know, more people fail than succeed. <laughs> and AJ, you know, even if it's just one cup win, he was a force to be reckoned with on those road courses and could be a force to be reckoned with on Sunday. You know, he could go out there and I would not be shocked if he no. won the race Me on neither. Sunday. Me neither. So you know, anytime we go to a, to race tracks with right hand turns, he is still a force to be reckoned with. You still got to account for AJ Allmendinger out there. Definitely. And I think, so. I think he'd be a force to be reckoned with in a better car at, you know, tracks with left hand turns too. So I think he's a better driver than what, he has at JTD JTG Doherty. Basically he's running Richard Childress cars right now. Yep. So, yep. and that yep. was another thing too. Last night, if, if any of you have Sirius XM and go back to listen to the recording of last night's show, um, Darty was talking about the Alliance and how the Alliance works and how it works for different teams and everything. And he was talking about his Alliance with RCR and it was really interesting. The insight that he gave into it, basically that, you know, obviously you would imagine there's different levels and the level he's at with RCR is they basically open their books on both ends and, you know, RCR can see what they're doing. They can see what RCR is doing. And when they have a team meeting, they have a team meeting together. And, you know, he was talking about the, the relationship with um, some of the other teams too. And, and what he knows about it. It was a lot of good insight to it. So really interesting. Yeah. And another good read at, um, is Pachris wrote earlier this week, or maybe it was late last week about how these alliances are not sustainable. Okay. And he kind of goes through the history of alliances. Uh, if you just go to ESPN.com uh, in their NASCAR section, it'll be on there. Um, but that's another really good read on how these alliances work mm-hmm. and, you know, how Furniture Row failed. And just a good, a nice little deep dive. You know, it, it talks a little bit about how Stuart Haas had to break away from Hendrick and how that relationship got really bad Right. in uh, in 2016 um, to where it is now. So, yeah, just another good read. Just a couple shout-outs on, on that one. Business side of this work would be pretty interesting. It's not something that – most fans really probably should concern themselves with, but it's really interesting if you want to dig into it. So, all right. I think that is the silly season update at this point, right? Yes. That's so good. Yes. You look at Twitter. Is anything broken while we're on? No, I don't think so. I think we're good still. <laughs> yep. I think we're good. <laughs> nobody, nobody else has left a ride. Nobody else has been signed at this point. So we're good. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I no, I do love silly season though. It oh, is a lot of fun. It good is stuff. a lot of fun. Good stuff. Yeah. So we go to the possibly one of the most, it's definitely one of the most, if not the most anticipated race of the entire season. And maybe of NASCAR in a long time. We go to the Roval this weekend at Charlotte motor speedway, the bank of America Roval 400. Um, I don't know, man. I I'm, I told my wife, I said, I'm watching the race on Sunday. Just so you know, um, don't make any plans for me because it, right. it is happening. Cause leave this... me alone, woman. Right? Is that how it went? <laughs> I, she listens to this <laughs> podcast, James. I would never speak to her that way. <laughs> okay, okay. I was just, you know, don't be getting be... me in trouble, man. She'll listen to this before general, Sunday. Just, you know, right? I was just saying in general. Oh, man, I she might not let me work with you anymore. Yeah, that. Be careful, man. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. Married men, no. <laughs> so well. anyway, um, I. So I have a prediction and I made a prediction last week and I was wrong and I hope that I'm wrong this week too. But my prediction is that this race has been overhyped and it will not be the crazy crash fest insanity that everybody is predicting. That's my prediction this weekend. Yep. So. And we are veterans of the Eldora experience. Right. So that is where I agree with you too. These guys yeah. are professionals, man. They're professional race car drivers. The it, last the last few laps could get really yeah. wild, but they're gonna go out there and it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. They're gonna race. It's a racetrack. That's yep. what they do. Of course testing was wild because you're pushing it. Right. You're not gonna push it like that. However, it's a cutoff race. So like you said, the ending can yep. get exciting. Um stages could get exciting at the end of the stages. One thing that I found really interesting, I don't remember who said it. But somebody pointed it out, and it might have just been a random person. It might have been somebody in NASCAR. I don't remember. But Canadian Tire Motorsports Park, we've had excellent finishes there, partially because of the last corner, last two corners there at that track. Does it look familiar at all? Because if a you bit. look at the dog leg <laughs> uh, or the, the kink or whatever you want to call it at the, at the front stretch at Charlotte right now, it looks really similar. So you you got somebody racing to get into the playoffs and they're in second place and they're within bumpers reach of the, the leader. They're wrecking him, man. Oh yeah. That could, the finish at Charlotte could be excellent. 
So. I think that's why they put that dang thing in there. I, think I don't so too. think that, I don't think it was a speed thing. I think it was, hey, we're gonna make this. We're gonna slow these guys down right before the line. It definitely because... helps for turn one because going into turn oh, one, yeah. Yeah. you'd be really. I mean, look at what who was it? Bowman that crashed there. Was it Bowman? It was Almendinger that actually yeah. went through. He had lost his brakes and. Went and I right mean, to... look at how fast he went through there, and they're in what second gear there. I yeah. mean, can you imagine yep. flying around that turn at 180 or? I mean, they're probably doing 140 or something like that, but still, you're going to hit yeah, that there's only, a ton. There's only one thing we know for sure going into this race, and that's Kyle Busch will be the pole sitter. Yeah. That's... I will take that to the bank because <laughs> of watching him during testing going through that back chicane. Yeah. Nobody took it like Kyle Busch. Yeah. That dude was full throttle all the way through that sucker. I, I love can't the wait. fact that... I can't wait to watch qualifying because I think he's going to go for it. Charlotte Motor Speedway has embraced this. They put a ton of effort into this thing. The walls are no longer yellow. They are now white with uh, American flags on them. It, it looks awesome. The turns, the corner uh, numbers on the turns are no longer one, two, three, and four because they're not one, two, and three, three and four right now. Right. So yeah. they've actually put the proper numbers on them for the road course. It's it's really neat. It's it's exciting. It's gonna be a really exciting weekend. Um, before we talk, before we make our picks, I want to play some audio. I don't exactly know this was off the the NASCAR YouTube channel. I assume it was Harvick's show on Sirius XM, but it's all Marcus Smith talking on Sirius XM about how the Rogel came about. So here's a quick clip of that. It was three years ago. We had a bad weather forecast. Ticket sales weren't where I wanted them to be, honestly. And I was looking out there and I thought, we've got uh, a phenomenal race with the, the NASCAR All-Star race in May. We follow it up with the, the NASCAR's longest, most challenging race in the Coca-Cola 600. And then in the fall, we just didn't have the same pizzazz that all the, the excitement around those first two races um, have. As I looked out uh, my window and saw the Speedway, and I thought, you know what? There's so much chatter about there not being a road course in the playoffs. There's a lot of chatter about there being too many intermediate mile and a halfs. I could kill two birds with one stone here. Let's change it up and, and run the Roval. If you're in the the sports car world, you come to Charlotte, when you drive the road course oval, you call the Roval. And it's been that way for a long time. I called our buddy Steve O'Donnell up from NASCAR and uh, and said, I, I've got a crazy idea. Are you sitting down? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and he laughed and said, okay, I'm sitting down. What What is it? And I floated this idea by him and he said, man, that's, that is crazy. I think it's pretty cool. Let's talk about it. It's about a two-week process and uh, got a lot of feedback. I think you and I had breakfast one morning, and I said, I got a crazy idea. What do you think about this? You gave me some you know, thumbs up on it, Kevin. And, um, and I, you know, I talked to a few other people. Max uh, Pappas was, was so uh, helpful in the whole process. Um, Jeff Gordon, Mario Andretti. Um, we just had a lot of great feedback on the whole project and tweaking all the details to get uh, to a world-class level road court. The biggest thing is I think whether this is a success or not, I applaud Charlotte Motor Speedway. I applaud NASCAR for putting this effort in to try it. I mean, they're going yeah. all in. This is not a halfway thing. All in on this to see how it works. And it could be one of the greatest things that happened to our sport. Right. Yeah, like Eldora for the truck race is yeah. is the only thing we can really compare it to. And it's, I mean, that's a fantastic event for the truck series. I think this has got the potential to be the same thing for the Cup Series. It could be something we really look forward to each year. Um, and, and if anybody wants a continuation of that story a little bit more, um, Nate Ryan had him on the NBC, NASCAR and NBC podcast as well. Um, and, and, and Marcus Smith talks about... Um, Mario Andretti testing the track for them, okay. which is a pretty good, pretty good story. Mario Andretti actually wanted to drive a uh, the certain Porsche, and I think I can't remember, like a 1918 Porsche or something like that. <laughs> and uh, one of the Smith brothers actually owns one, and Marcus goes into detail on how they actually <laughs> got the car out there for Mario and all this other stuff. <laughs> um, but Mario was the one who suggested the back chicane. They okay. were not going to do it. They were not going to do a back chicane. Um, so, I mean, if you're getting input from guys like Jeff Gordon and, and Max Pappas or Mario Andretti, um, I mean, they really did, like you said, they really put the time in to make this thing right. And I think it's going to be a great show. I think it's going to be a great race. Yeah. It's going to be exciting no matter what. Um, it's a road course, you know, you're going to have, you're going to have battles. You're going to have, um, bumping, you're going to have some contact. There's going to be some crashes. It might not be the craziness that they are predicting, but 
it's going to be a good race. I, 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 yep. I have confidence that if nothing else, the spectacle of it is going to make it a good race, even if somebody leads every lap. Yep. You know, so. for sure. And we got and we get, you know, people forget too. we got the Xfinity series going the day before. So we yep. get the Roval, you know, we get a full dose of Roval this weekend. I think the Xfinity uh-huh. race is going to be the more interesting one because they yeah. have not they don't have the experience out there that the cup guys do. The other right. thing that I think is going to be interesting, I will be curious to see. First of all, I'll be curious to see how many people come to this race, see if they have a good crowd. And yep. I predict it being similar to the truck series at Eldora in that we're going to have a bigger crowd for practice than we have for a lot of truck and Xfinity races. Yeah. Well, I know uh, my, my buddy, Derek winter, I've mentioned him on the podcast before uh, lives here in Michigan. He's driving down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got got his tickets. He's going to the Roval. He's really excited. So this was on my list. I was really close to trying to do this one, but I figured yeah. everybody and their brother, as far as media, would be there, and I, I, it just wasn't worth it to try and battle it out. So, yeah. well, and every NASCAR fan should go through Charlotte at some point if this is your race, or if you go for the All Star or the Six Hundred. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a great place to be for a NASCAR fan. Um, you know, go to the Hall of Fame, go all the race shops, and then go to the race. Um, yeah, it should be a lot of, should be hopefully a pretty good crowd for everybody this week. Right. It could be, it could be great. I get the feeling James that you're trying to prolong this because you have the first pick this week. Oh God. And if we go on the racing reference page for the Charlotte Roval, there is zero data because we've got nothing to pick up. Yeah. We've never run a race here, so I can't rely on my average finish pick that I normally, uh, rely on. Um, we got no data, so we have no data. But you got Nothing. the first pick, so who are you going with this weekend at Charlotte? Oh, and what's man. your reason behind it? Um, well, we could be as crazy as we want this <laughs> week, right? Yeah. Um, so before we hit the record button on the podcast, you and I were going through the scenarios, right? Uh, and one of my one of my thoughts was I was looking at my fantasy team, right? And mm-hmm. we have no data, like you said. And I thought, you know who I'm going to put as my my A starter. Yeah, I'm going to put Jimmy Johnson, and here's my reason why. Jimmy's going to play it safe. He's going to play it smart because he's on the bubble. And if he has a shot to win late, I think he's probably going to be my safest best bet. So I'm going to take Jimmy Johnson. It'd be easy to pick somebody like Kyle Busch or, you know, Harvick or you know all those true you know Truex has been really good on road courses but they're already locked in those guys yeah. are locked into the next round so if, if they're going for it they have a chance to probably be even a little more reckless than most so it makes me weary and you know also a guy like you know I could pick Jimmy Johnson or I could go with a guy like Chase Elliott or somebody like that but I'm gonna take the experience I'm gonna this is probably the first time I've picked him all year I think it is I'm gonna take the Jimmer as I, I just have a feeling about him this week and I could be totally wrong. So here's my counter on Jimmy Johnson for you. The problem with sure. Jimmy is Jimmy and Chad watch everything. And if sure, Jimmy yeah. is in and he's running second, he's not going to risk it to take the win. Right. I, so, I agree with you. So if he, you. if he can get himself in on points, they're not going to do anything stupid. They're going to put around in fifth place yep. if they need to, or whatever they're going to have to do. Yep. So I am going to take the easy route. But I'm not taking it for the reason that it's an easy pick. So I'm going Kyle Busch, but my reasoning for it is that, A, he doesn't have anything to lose because he's already in. But, B, Kyle Busch is one on every track in NASCAR except, except for one. So I am going for Kyle Busch. I like it. Adding this and continuing to be the only driver that's one on every track in NASCAR. So Yes. There I like go. it. And I get, Very good. I get the first dark horse. Oh, man. Does I, everybody count as a dark horse in this race? I think they do, just about. I mean, I can't take A.J. Allmendinger. That's too easy of a dark horse pick, so I'm not going You got the AJ. first pick. I would take him. Go for it, man. I'm not taking him. I'm not taking A.J. I'm not going to take him. I'm not going to take him either, but. Um, <clears throat> God, I don't know who to pick for a dark horse. <laughs> Can I pick Eric Jones? No, nah, Eric Jones has won a race. I can't pick him as a dark horse. Yeah, that's a long uh, stretch for a dark horse. Yeah. You could pick one of his teammates, though. I would think that he might be pretty good. I'm not picking Suarez. Oh. I'm not picking Suarez. Runs those road courses in Mexico, man. He was pretty good. 
I'm going to go with absolutely no reason whatsoever <laughs> with Alex Bowman. Oh, man, he was on my list. I wasn't going to pick him, but, yeah, that's a good one. I'll go Alex Bowman. He's well, it's, he's hanging yeah. on there at the end. It'd be cool to see him get a win and get in. And I don't know. I just – I think – I Other think something reasons. something crazy is going to happen this weekend as far as a winner. Oh, yeah, for a, sure. We're going to get something yeah. different. For the same reasons probably I, I like Jimmy Johnson to have a really good race is probably the same reasons you would pick somebody like Alex Bowman. Yeah. He's on the bubble. He needs a solid day. Uh, he'll get through. There you go. I'm, I'm going to go my dark horse. I'm going to go with the super sub. Oh. Reagan Smith. That's a good one. Regan Smith. Regan Smith. Yeah, learn how to spell, pronounce his name correctly. But I can't get the David Reagans in the <laughs> – Regan Smith's. That's a really, a really good pick, actually. Yeah, I'm going with the super sub. I like it. That's a really good pick. I, yeah, he's got nothing to lose either, man. He can, and and he's pretty dang good this year on in the Xfinity series. So why yeah. not? Yeah. Dang, that's a really good pick. Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, any shout outs before we move out out of here, James? I know. I already talked about my buddy Derek going down to the Roval. I was going to use that as my shout out. So uh, hopefully he has a good time. A lot go. of fun. Um, I'm going to shoot out, shout out Adam Stern again. We've done it before on the podcast, but if you want some good breaking inside NASCAR news, follow Adam Stern on Twitter. Excellent. What the heck is it? AJ underscore 12. Is that what it is? I think that's what he is. Yes. Um, kind of right in front of me, but there's a few guys like him on Twitter that are really good and they're kind of undercover NASCAR like gurus. Right. There was a guy on um, there like debating Adam Stern's uh, info. And talking like he was like he knew what he was do- talking about. And it's like, dude, do you know who Adam Stern is? <laughs> like, Adam I haven't like seen un- him have anything wrong yet. Yeah, he's really smart. He's one of those inside guys, man. He's just he's like a like Pockers is a grinder. Mm-hmm. Adam Stern is kind of like that, too, I would think. Yeah, he just gets a ton of information. And, you know, he's like you he said, he's always right. He's always figuring stuff out. Right. Um, and heck I'll throw out Chad Finley too. Uh, like I said, Michigan driver, uh, raced out at tri city motor speedway a few times the track that I work at and, uh, and running in the, uh, Arca series uh, and truck series on occasion. So trying to make his way, uh, up through the ranks and seems like, yeah, guy, so I like that. I can't find Adam Stern on Twitter. I can't find his freaking. <laughs> I'll look name. him up really quick too. <laughs> yeah. Um, like Safari is having so many issues as I'm trying to search it too. So meanwhile, James, while we're looking, ah, there it is. A underscore S 12. There it is. Yep. That's it. Go. So, yep. um, James, where can they find you on Twitter at James Cush on Twitter? You can find me at T super speedway. You can find the podcast on Facebook at facebook.com slash the super speedway. Uh, you can find us on the, on our web, on, on the web, on our website at face at <laughs> Wow. Crash and burn at the end, man. We Crash were doing and burn. such a good job the last few uh, weeks, too. We have a caution, Bad and then job. there's that, and then yep. this. And so website is thesuperspeedway.com. Um, you can find the podcast on there, coverage of some of the races, some of the photos I took this year, and, uh, and a lot more. We'll put the show notes up there as well, so you can click on the links and read the stories that we talked about tonight. Uh, you can find the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and SoundCloud if you enjoy what you hear and want to become a patron and support us, visit patreon.com slash the super, super speedway to do that. Am I missing anything, James? I think we got it all in. No, but after that uh, tough read, though, I think we should get the heck out of here. Yeah, I think we, I'm going to go crash into a pillow and go back to sleep because this cold sucks. So good. <laughs> uh, it's roll time this weekend. We're looking forward to it. We'll be back next week to talk about it and talk about round number two of the playoffs. Until then, everybody, let's go racing. Let's <laughs> go racing.